This video is now in session, and the pundits are saying the same thing again. The 2024 election is going to be the most important election of our lifetime. They said the same thing in 2020 and in 2016. So in this video, I want to actually figure out what is the impact of this presidential election. Now, before I begin this video, I apologize in advance if I'm breathing pretty heavily. My nose is a little bit congested. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at this. We can take a look at this uh, by looking at the three branches of government, right? You have the executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch. We're gonna, for this video, we're gonna just look at the presidential election because uh, the legislative branch and their elections are not going to be or unlikely to be of importance uh, for between 2024 and 2026. And I'll explain why later. But for the presidency, what they can control, what they have direct control over is the executive branch, meaning that they control agencies like the EPA and the Department of the Interior, which creates, uh, creates regulations uh, as well as enforces bills that come out of Congress. What this means in practice is the Department of the Interior, for example, can create new oil drilling permits in uh, oil states such as Alaska, which is what Biden did in his administration. You can also say that the Department of Homeland Security can uh, impose new emergency restrictions that prevent many migrants from Mexico and Central America uh, from traversing the southern border, which is what Trump did uh, in 2020. So these issues, oil drilling, uh, immigration, these issues have been perennial issues, and they will remain perennial issues uh, through the 2024 election, especially immigration uh, with the record amount of migrants that are trying to cross the southern border at this moment. So that's one, uh, that's one sphere, or I guess that's the domestic side. Uh, of the executive branch that will be of importance. You also have the foreign side, the foreign affairs, uh, which will be perhaps the most important <laughs> in 10 years, because even though the United States is no longer directly involved in these issues, since they pulled out of troops from Afghanistan in 2021, there is a war between Israel and the Hamas. And then you also have Yemen blocking um, much of the shipping lanes that help uh, that help our economy thrive uh, and help the movement of goods. And then you also ha now have an emergent issue between Iran and Pakistan. So whoever becomes president will have sway over how these um, how these wars uh, turn out, especially uh, the Yemen conflict and uh, the. Um, what happens in Israel, considering that the United States does have a lot of political leverage over Israel's activities. You can also say that NATO will be impacted by this presidential election because uh, the presidency, uh, the president can choose to back out of, um, to back out of, I guess, their requirements in NATO, for example, or become less influential in the United Nations. So foreign affairs, which already is quite important in this election, will remain uh, an issue that can be greatly impacted by whoever becomes president. But beyond that, on the legislative side, there's not much to say. And the reason why is because the legislative branch is unlikely to actually start uh, uh, start churning out new bills like they did between 2020 and 2022. And that's because uh, you have a divided government. In 2020, which is uh, when the 118th Congress was elected, uh, we have so far seen very little come out of that Congress. Uh, they, uh, in fact, the fewest amount of pieces of legislation that have come out of this Congress since the founding of America. And so uh, given that we've seen this progression happen from 2018 to 2020 and now 2022 to 2024, uh, we're likely to see this continue because uh, what we're, what is likely to happen is the Senate flips to the Republicans and the House flips to the, the Democrats. I can explain why in a different video, but basically the Senate is has a map that's favorable to the Republicans and the House uh, has a very narrow, very narrow majority uh, for the Republicans and Democrats have very... Uh, have a lot of opportunities in states such as New York to flip these Republican seats. So, a lot of so issues such as taxes, 
and long-term immigration policy, along with um, defense spending those, and social security, those issues are not going to likely to be changed by whoever becomes president, simply because Congress is still is likely to remain ineffective. So that's really what's at stake at this election. Democrats can say that um, democracy is at stake because of Trump's behavior. Uh, but in the end, the United States does have some guardrails. Uh, what I guess what it all sums up to is foreign affairs in the Middle East and Central Asia, immigration, and as well as social issues in the United States through the judicial branch, which the presidency does have some control over through the nomination process. That is still very important. It's not as, I guess, br- uh, br- uh, like, it's not as wide of a gamut in, of, in, of impact, <laughs> sorry, that they can make in uh, compared to the 2012 elections and the 2008 elections, but it's still very important. Immigration is important. Foreign affairs is critical. Uh, it will be critical uh, for the next five years. Um, and the United States does have a lot of social strife going on uh, within our country right now. So uh, even though this election might not necessarily be the most impactful of our time, it will certainly be very meaningful. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. This video is now adjourned, and I'll see you in the next one.